Hi, can you explain what an immediately invoked function expression is in JavaScript? In simple words, an anonymous function that is executed immediately after it is declared is known as an immediately invoked function expression. Here's the syntax for this pattern. In this example, I've created a function that prints hello world to the console. This function does not have a name and it is wrapped within parenthesis and it is immediately executed after it is created. Immediately invoked function expression is also known as a self-execute an anonymous function. Okay, so what's the purpose of this function then? Why can't you just call console.log without wrapping it in any function at all? In this case, yes, I can. This was just a basic example to illustrate the syntax. The benefit of immediately invoked function expressions is that they create a new scope just like any other function would. So variables defined inside an immediately invoked function expression cannot be accessed outside of that function. This way, you won't pollute the global namespace. So for example, if in my previous anonymous function, I create a new variable call greeting. I'm able to access this variable inside of this function, but if I try to print this variable outside of this immediately invoked function, this results in an error. Another use case is that it allows you to use await by creating an async immediately invoked function expression. Can you explain what the output of this code is going to be? So I have a person object with the property age set to 32 and the property name is a nested object. So, so it has the properties first set to John and last set to do. Then I create a new object called person2 by spreading the properties of person1. Then I set the value of person two dot name dot first to Jane and set the value of person two dot age to 20. What will be the value of person one? The output will be this: the value of person one dot name dot first will be changed to Jane, whereas the value of person one dot age will remain the same, that is thirty two. Why is that? That is because when you use the spread operator, only a shallow copy is created. So this means that only the top level structure is copied. So any nested objects and their properties will not be recursively copied. When you spread person one, the primitive values are copied, whereas for nested objects, only their references are copied. So when you use the dot notation to manipulate the value of name dot first, the changes are reflected in the original object as well. Because both person1.name and person2.name point to the same object value in memory. Can you tell what will happen if I do this? Instead of doing person2.name.first equals to Jane, if I do person2.name equals to a new object with first set to Jane and last set to Smith. Now, what will be the value of person1? Hi, can you explain what callbacks are in JavaScript? A callback is just a function that is passed to another function as an argument. So just like you would pass numbers or strings to a function, you can also pass functions to a function. And these functions are commonly referred to as callback functions. For example, I have a function called callback that prints task done to the console. I have another function called main that accepts a function parameter. Inside main, it performs some tasks and after these tasks are finished, it calls the callback function and then maybe performs some other tasks. So if you call main with this callback function, it will print processing task finished and task done. Can you give me a practical example of using callbacks? Sure, you'll commonly find callbacks being used in array methods like reduce, for each, map, filter, etc. Consider this, I have an array of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and I call the for each method on this array number and I pass this callback function to the for each method. This callback function simply just prints the element at a certain index. The implementation of the for each method might look something similar to this. So the for each method accepts a callback function and it iterates through the array and runs this callback function on each element of this array. Array destructuring is in JavaScript. Array destructuring allows you to unpack or extract values from an array and assign them to individual variables using a more modern and simpler syntax. Can you explain that with the help of an example? I have an array here called numbers with three elements 10, 20, and 30. If you wanted to access any particular value from this array, you would probably assign it to a variable using array indexing. If there were multiple values that you were interested in, you would do that for every separate value. With the help of array restructuring, you can do that within a single assignment statement. On the left hand side is an ordered list of variables. These variables will be assigned matching values from the array on the right hand side. You can also skip a value if you don't need it by not assigning it to any variable at all. 
Can you tell me what would be the output of this piece of code? Welcome to your JavaScript interview. Can you explain what event propagation is? Event propagation refers to how events propagate or in simple words, travel in nested elements. It consists of two phases, capturing and bubbling. Can you tell me a little bit more about these two phases? So when an event happens, let's say the user does a mouse click or hovers over an element or presses a key, event bubbling happens and the event travels from the innermost element to the outermost element. So it bubbles up. For example, I have three elements, div, p, and span nested within each other. Now I have a function called handle click that creates an alert called clicked in the parameter tag. And I've attached this same handler to all of these three elements. So whenever I click on the span tag, three alerts are created. And in this order, span is alerted first, then p is alerted, and then div is alerted. Whereas in event capturing, the order is reversed. Now the event travels from the outermost element towards the innermost element. You can add event handlers during the capturing phase by sending true as a third optional parameter to the add event listener method. Now this will be the order of the alert. So div is alerted first, then p is alerted, and then lastly span is alerted. One more thing to note is that capturing actually happens before bubbling. So if you have event listeners on both the capturing and bubbling phase on the same element, the capture event handler will be triggered first. What will be the output of this JavaScript program? I have a function which returns the result of the logical expression true or on console.log hello world. What will be the output? A, true, hello world, B, hello world, and then true, or C, just true. The output will be C, true. Can you explain a little bit why that would be the case? Hello world will not be printed because of something known as short circuit evaluation. So it is a mechanism where the logical expressions are evaluated only as much as needed to determine or calculate the final result of the logical expression. In this case, since the first operand is true, it is sufficient to determine the overall result of the logical OR expression because OR just needs one of the operands to be true to return true. True or true is true as well as true or false is also true. So the second operand will not be evaluated. This means that console.log hello world will never be called.